bringing the message of hope, health, and healing. Richard and Betty Jean Money present Christ the Healer. Join Richard and Betty Jean as they exercise their divine call to present Christ the Healer, healer of the hopeless, the hurting, and the sick. With a message of comfort and victory today, Christ the Healer. And now your host, Evangelist Richard and Betty Jean Money. Hello, we're Christ the Healer, and we'd like to introduce you to our good friend Michael Linderman, and uh, we just want to say we're happy to have you here today. I'm happy to be here. And, uh, Michael, what branch of service were you in? I was in the United States Army. Oh, wow, well, I bet that was, uh, that was life-changing, huh? It was fun. It, it was, was fun? fun? Yeah. When you were in the Army, were you serving the Lord? Uh, absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. What, um, what, what? But you did tell us that you had a background of going to church. You just didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord, or no? I was. Uh, I went to church uh, as long as I could remember until I went to the army, mm. and then uh, then I just went completely wild. So yeah. by wild, what do you mean by wild? Uh, just. Drinking on a daily basis, uh, doing other things that uh, the army probably wouldn't, that don't need to know about. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you're talking about. I, I was in the military too, and he's a jarhead. There's a lot of things you don't <laughs> say. <laughs> I can understand that. You was in the, uh, you was with the MPs for a while too, wasn't you? Mm -mm. No, I was in the I was in the, the cavalry. The cavalry. The cavalry? Yeah. Kind of well, like kind of like F Troop. That, you remember the old, the old movie F Troop? Except we don't oh, ride around on really? horses anymore. We ride around on a mechanized armored um, steel horses. Right. Um, <laughs> but the the interesting thing was is that when I got out, um, I had met my wife Hope. Uh, about three months before I was getting out. And the day that we got out, we, uh, we decided that we were going to drive from El Paso, Texas, to, to Tampa, Florida, where, where I live. And uh, that, anybody that knows, uh, that's a long drive. It is from, a long drive. From El Paso. I mean, you have to go all It's a long drive from Houston. <laughs> right, right. Um, El Paso. And on the way, um, we were driving, uh, it's probably about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I had just gotten outside of St. Charles, Louisiana. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I heard, I heard the Lord tell me, you need to go back to church. Wow. And I hadn't been to church in quite a while, you know. The thing that, uh, the thing that made it hard for me was is that I had this, uh, my, which was my girlfriend at the time, was, uh, which was Hope. Mm -hmm. I had met her in a bar. Mm. You know, so how do you, you know, you, you uproot someone and you take them halfway, you know, virtually halfway across the country with you and then you, then you kind of switch up, you know, you got this party girl um, that you've met, <laughs> that, you know, you've been drinking with for the last three months and partying and doing all kind of, you know, mm. ungodly things, you know, and then you decide, oh, I'm going to go to church. Mm. So that was, that was, um, that was, that was quite what, a shock to her. It, it, well, I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her. Um, uh, I, I heard the Lord tell me that, and it was about two o'clock in the morning. We were driving on I-10, and uh, He told me, "I want you to go back to church." And what I just told you is what I told the Lord. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, how do you? How, how am I going to explain that to her? You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to ship her back <laughs> to wherever she came from." You know, <laughs> um, little did I know that uh, that God had set it all up because uh, I waited about about two or three months. Before I before I said anything to her, I waited for us to get to Florida, get settled in, and um, you know, sh and then I found I, yeah I, I didn't know that she knew anything about church, you know, mm. um, and then come to find out she was raised Pentecostal, and I was raised Baptist, mm. so you know we bet that was an eye opener. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. We all, we were always taught that they were of the devil. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, no. Um, no, it, it was very interesting because uh, she walked in a lot of uh, humility because I didn't want to go to a full gospel church, mm -hmm. you know. So I started to go to a Baptist church. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Mother's Day, she wanted to go to a full gospel church. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went to one in Tampa, 
uh, called Living Water, and it was a pretty big church. And um, of course, you know Hope. She had to sit on the front row. She couldn't sit like <laughs> oh, in, yeah. in the back row, you know. And um, and uh, it was it was very strange because up to that point, I had not understood or had the ability to walk in the gifts of the Spirit or anything like that. Even though the Lord was ministering those things to me slowly but surely, um, but I'm not even sure if that pastor remembers this. But I. Um, uh, his name was Pastor Ron. I don't remember his last name. Uh, we, this first time we went to the church, the church had, it was a very, pretty large church. It had about 150 hmm. to 200 people in it. Um, never been there before, never met this guy before in my life. And uh, they had, when you left the church, they had, they had two doors and they would shake, shake the people's hands when they left. You know, and um, what really ministered to me was, was the worship. Hmm. The worship was just, I mean, it was phenomenal, you know. Um, but as I was leaving, you know, he made a bean line for me, you know, and I could see him looking at me, you know, like like he wanted to tell me something. I didn't really you up a little bit. Yeah, I didn't really want to talk to him too much. You know? <laughs> to get out of it. Exactly. So he he comes over to me, and um, I don't remember how old I was. I think I was probably 23 or 24 at the time, and and uh, I know he didn't know me because I didn't know him. And he told me, he said, "Hey, you know, the Lord told me to tell you that." Um, it took you 20, 23 or 24, however, however old I was then, that's what he told me. And he said, um, it may take you 20, you know, it may take you 23 years to get back mm. uh, to where um, God wants you to be. And I thought, wow, you know, what a, you know, and my response to him was, uh, well, next time God has a word for me, um, have him come tell me. You know, oh boy. I, I was I was very you know I was I didn't really believe in a lot of that stuff uh -huh. you know um, and I'm sure glad it didn't take 23 years <laughs> for me to get back uh, yeah. you know the Lord had I'd been blessed to be surrounded by by wonderful teachers and wonderful pastors and mm. and uh, the power evangelism school um, explained a lot of things that were happening in my life so. Uh, Won't you look at the camera over there and invite people to come to the Power Evangelism School and tell them something about it, what, what it's all about. The Power Evangelism School here in, here in Houston, Texas, when I, first, when I first met Richard and Betty Jean, um, is a school of ministry to where you can come and um, it, they'll break the ice for you if, you if you don't know how to. You know, you want to go out and do things for God. Um, you may be called to the youth or to outreaches or to pastor a church, but you just don't know how to get started. It's a it's a free school that you can come to. Um, they're gonna they're gonna push you and they're gonna try you and the devil's gonna try you. And um, I originally came to the school just to get the license. So if that's you know if that is in your heart, then that's okay because the Lord will deal with your heart while you're here at the school. They teach you everything from the gifts of the Spirit to how to pray with people. You know, a lot of people would love to go out and pray with people, but they just don't have that boldness or know how to break the ice to, uh, to go out and pray for people. So I'd encourage you to come and give them a call, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Everything is free, and uh, I don't know what else to say about that. It, it, was, it was an awesome experience. I know the school has changed. I know me and Hope have came back uh, have come back and taught at the schools and we've always had a blast mm -hmm. whether it was a hospital ministry or whether it was you know going out to the street um, we've always had fun we've always had a blast it was trying you know yeah um, but it was very very um, uh, I can't even think of a, a word that would describe what it's done in me and Hope's life yeah. I mean we would not we would not be doing what we're doing with the youth and and everything else had it not been for the, the power of evangelism school. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Because, you know, sometimes we don't know what happens after everybody leaves the school yeah. until somebody does come back and let us know or shows us what God is doing in their lives. And that's really the purpose of the school is to help you be who God has called you to, Amen. what he's called you to do. And a lot of people think, well, they're just... Uh, I can't let people go from my church because they might steal them. Well, that's not true. 
we don't care where you go to church as long as you love Jesus. And we're not, we're not uh, thieves. We don't steal sheep. What we want to do through this school is to teach you, train you, equip you, send you out. Send you out. Do you hear that, Pastor? Send your sheep out to reproduce and bring more sheep into your church and to go out into the highways and byways and to teach other people how to lead people to the Lord. You see, a lot of people don't understand that maybe you you know maybe you've tried to leave and i say tried to lead someone to the lord and everybody said no and so you quit well maybe you just wasn't doing it right there is a right way and there is a wrong way you don't have to preach from genesis to revelation for somebody oh, to get no. born again <laughs> you know it's just presenting the gospel in truth yeah. the bible says the truth will set you free you know, Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And he said, all who come to me, that they will be saved. And it's through Jesus Christ that you are born again, through Jesus Christ, that you're saved. And, you know, when you're born again, he doesn't want you just going to a church, checking your money in a basket or an offering plate and sing a few songs and hear a 15-minute message and hallelujah, goodbye, and out the door you go. No, that's not serving Christ. If you have a desire in your heart to serve Him, I encourage you to go to our website. It's www.cthem.org. And look and see what we do. We go on the streets, feed the homeless. We go to hospitals. We go to nursing homes. We go to uh, missions. We, you know, we, we're not just about right here where we are. We're an outreach church. We believe in reaching the lost. And if you'll call us, we'll be glad to send you this uh, CD on healing scriptures. Just call us. And, you know, honey, right now, I think I would like to sing a song, if that's all right. Okay. <laughs>
Michael, um, now that you've uh, gone through the Power Evangelism School and, and you and Hope have taught and you've found that serving God is a whole new, a whole new thing in life, um, would you turn back and go back the other way now? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, um, we even ministers at times have fallen, you know, you know, sometimes you you feel like you're slipping back, mm -hmm. and 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 you know the Lord the Lord is there for us all the time. That's right. And there's been times in our lives where 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 we've made mistakes, even as ministers. Um, but the Lord the Lord said that He's quick to forgive. But uh, the thing that really ministered to me, I think, that really changed my life about the Power Evangelism School was that um, was that you could find all different kinds of denominations. That was mm -hmm. just. Yeah, that was just phenomenal to me because when yeah. you come to the school, you could be sitting next to, uh, you could be in class sitting next to someone that's Catholic or somebody that mm -hmm. has come from a, a Lutheran Honestly, church or a non-denominational. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it it really does cross all the denominational lines, and I think that's what really kind of opened up my eyes because at the point that we, where when we were going to the school, you know, our mindset was is that, you know, you pick a denomination, you stick with it. You know, when we went to the school, we were like, wow, you know, we can, we can talk to anybody. We can go yeah. minister that's to right. Jehovah Witnesses or, yes. or anybody. Yes. And that's because of what we've, what we've learned about the Word of God that, that you know. Works for everybody. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's true. <laughs> yes. You know, and it works for everybody. Michael, you are an excellent teacher. Mm -hmm. Betty Jean and I have recognized that, that gift in you a long time ago. And we just want to encourage you to, to stay with that, mm -hmm. stay with your call, and, uh, and God's going to do great things through you. I mean, uh, I could see it just as clear as his day. You know, it's it's really good. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, and, 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 and you're heart. right. The yeah. Lord, is, the Lord is doing something. I think yes. He's going to do. A, uh, he's going to start to do a new thing here in Houston. Yes. So, praise God. So get to the Power Evangelism School because we need all the help we can get. That's Amen. right. And what he means by help is the harvest field is white and it's huge and there's not enough laborers. That is scripture. I mean, Jesus himself said that, that the harvest fields were white, ready to be harvested. And they are. If you just look all around you, you see people who are hurting. You see people who are getting divorces, people who are losing their jobs, people who have children that are they out of control. No and they're just to the point to where they just don't know what else they're going to do. You know, when um, when I gave my heart to Jesus, I was smoking dope. I was doing cocaine. I was living with a man I wasn't married to. I was running, running the roads, going to bars, doing my own thing. And I just began to feel like there was something missing in my life. And I just could not figure out what it was. And I just said something real simple. I said, God, is this all there is to life? Is this it? Is there anything else? And it wasn't but about a week later that I happened to see a, a preacher on television, which I don't look at, I didn't look at preachers on TV. And I know that some of you out there, you don't either. You don't like to look at them. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> the Holy Spirit gripped my heart. And I put that joint down and I listened and, I, and what this man said to me, he said, you tried it your way and it didn't work. So how about trying it God's way? Amen. And I just began to cry and weep because that was the truest thing I had ever heard. And so I did. I just surrendered my heart to him. But then I thought, well, okay, so what do I do now? Well, I saw this man. You know, God will give you a plan if you will give him something to work with. Yes. And this preacher was not even from Houston, but he was coming to Houston and was holding um, a, a service. And so I went to that service. I purposed in my heart 
to serve God, but I didn't know how. I didn't know what to do because all I'd ever heard was name the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen, that's it, hallelujah, goodbye. And never did I ever see anybody raise their hands up and worship God. Never saw men in suits dancing before the Lord. Boy, this just blew me away when I went to this meeting and I thought, what kind of meeting is this? Where do these people come from? I didn't know what it was, but I knew I liked it. And it was just down to earth people rejoicing, praising God, worshiping Him, honoring Him. And I, I got filled with the Holy Spirit in, in the third meeting I went to while He was here in town. And I'm telling you, God changed my life forever, filled me with the Holy Spirit, gave me the power to be an overcomer, taught me things I needed to know that I didn't know. And God just totally just changed me miraculously. I mean, I just, I was that woman at the well. What can I say? <laughs> but God, God loves you. And he'll change your heart just like he changed Michael's heart, just like he changed Richard's heart. He will change your heart. Yeah. Michael, won't you just look at the camera and pray and, and uh, minister to some of the people out there that were going through some of the things that perhaps you went through? Amen. Well, I just want to say that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you are you have a desire to come to the Power of Evangelism School, then we're going to pray with you. We're going to stand in agreement with you that the Lord will make a way for you to come. So right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, everybody that's watching, Lord, Father, if they have a, if they have a desire in their heart that you put there to walk into the ministry, Father, I ask you that you would make a way for them. Make every crooked path straight, Lord, that they would be able to come to this school in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe that you were resurrected and you now sit at the right hand of the Father. I ask you to save me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I was, uh, I was in the Marine Corps uh, uh, just a few days before Michael was. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually about close to 50 years ago I was in the Marines. Uh, but I understand what military life is like, you know, and, and the temptations and the draws that you have to party hardy and just <laughs> just uh, make a wreck out of your life, really, you know. But uh, but I'm I'm just I'm just thankful to God for knowing you, Michael, because. Even though, even though you've been through a lot of hard times, you're still real with God, and you're still real with people. And uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you because uh, of what you stand for and, and when you teach. I know it's coming from your heart, from, from the heart of the Father. So I, yeah. I, it blesses me when, you, when you're around. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. Well, you know, something Richard told me after we met and got married, he, I've heard him tell people about how when he was in the military that um, this, he had Assembly of God pastor that would come and get him up and he'd walk on the beach in Hawaii with him and Richard wasn't even saved. But he yeah. would walk with his pastor and he would ask him about his sermon, tell him what his sermon was all about and the whole time oh, yeah. he wasn't even saved. Yeah, this, this little church... Uh, the pastor would come and get me sometimes at one or two o'clock in the morning and knock on the door and wake me up and get me to go for walks on the beach with him. And uh, you know, we we when we're going to church, we can't just automatically assume that that person is saved. It's sitting right. out there. Right. You you have to mm -hmm. you have to go by the spirit. You know, to know you know where where people are at. You know. And ask God to show you, and He will. He He'll show you who's saved. He He'll show you who's in the harvest, and uh, 
and I wasn't in the harvest. I mean, I was just as lost as a goose. <laughs> I was, I was uh, just doing my own thing, but I always went to church on Sunday because I was raised that way. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that kind of brings that scripture to mind, that, you know, about the, you know, when train up a child when he's young so that when he's old he won't, won't Depart from depart. That's right. right. That's right. And yeah. so that stayed with me, even though uh, the church I was in, I, I I can never remember anybody saying anything about uh, the saving grace of Jesus for my life, personally. It was like it was somebody that was still hanging on a cross. Right. You know, and it and, it's, and it was something that I couldn't. I couldn't relate to because nobody really took the time to to speak to me about it. But you know what? Years later, I got born again, and uh, it, when I got born again, I God just totally changed me from the inside out, and and He started working on me and dealing with me about things in my life. So, yeah, I understand you know what it's like to be out there thinking you're cool with God and really you're just going to hell in a handbasket or you know, something. You know, you know the thing that, that that was reminded of is that um, I remember when we were when I got in the military we were living in a one bedroom trailer uh -huh. you know and it was a very small trailer and I was home one day and I was I was uh, I was contemplating going back into the military you mm -hmm. know because we just were doing so bad financially and uh I was looking. I was sitting in my bed. I was looking into the closet, and I was looking at that. I was looking at the uniform, and I could see, you know, I could see the the awards that I have mm -hmm. have received, and the, the Army Achievement Medals, and the Army Commendation Medals, and those type of things. And and you know, the Lord told me. He said, you know, those those don't mean anything. You know, mm -hmm. and at the time, I didn't understand what he was saying, but what he was saying was, is that. Without me, the, the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. Absolutely. You know, that's and right. that's what, you know, that's what really kind of turned my heart, my heart towards God, you know, was that, yeah, you, you did a lot. You basically wasted six years of your life mm -hmm. because you did it without him, mm -hmm. you know, right. and that's, and that's what really kind of um, set me on this path to mm -hmm. start reading the word and, and I'll read the word, you know, mm -hmm. all night sometimes, you know. Praise God. So. But I, w I just want to personally thank you guys. We really, honestly, we would not be where we are today. Even though we've stumbled and we've fell, fallen in our walk, you know, since we've been to the school, God has always brought us back mm. to the same road, to the path of life, you know, and that's where we are, that's where we are now. But it, I think it would have been impossible had we not met, met, met you guys and, and went to the school and everything. It's only through the grace of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you'd like more information about the Power Evangelism School, go to our website, www.cthem.org, or give us a call, 281-955-0496. And if you'll call us, we'll be glad to send you the uh, CD with uh, beautiful he music on it and healing scriptures. You'll be blessed because this is nothing but the Word of God. It's yours free. It's our gift to you. And you just, just call us and whatever you have need of, if we can help you in any way, if you need to find a good church or whatever, whatever's on your heart, you know, we know what pain is about. We know what hurt is about. We've all been through hurt. We've all been through pain. And when you're going through disappointments and pain and maybe you... Maybe you saw your best buddy die, but let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. He'll always love you, and he cares for you no matter what's going on in your life. Make Jesus the Lord of your life.